welcome to the rpb resonance chemistry today our topic is valence bond theory so valence bond theory was uh, explained by the carlinus pauling mainly explained by the carlinus pauling and uh, s l slater so carlinus pauling got the two nobel prizes one category is chemistry another category is physics so he is the scientist got the two unshared nobel prizes so two unshared nobel prizes so generally vbt deals with vbt deals with hybridization geometry magnetic properties as well as inner orbital complexes or outer orbital complexes now the fifth one is exception in 4d and 5d series so in the geomet geometry and hybridization it it gives the information about uh, which orbitals are participated in hybridization either the having the five orbitals uh, in among the five which orbital can participate in the hybridization so now here it is help to orbital involvement orbital involvement so generally before going to the topic if we deals with valence bond theory what things we are need what we need is electronic configuration electronic configuration then second one is magnetic properties second one is magnetic properties so now the first one is electronic configuration the first one is electronic configuration i think we are very familiar with the electronic configuration at the 6th and 7th standard we are knowing that 1 to 30 elements so generally we are discussed here 21st to 30 elements first one is scandium titanium vanadium chromium manganese iron cobalt nickel copper and zinc so the atomic numbers 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 so in generally 21 means uh, the nearest noble gas is argon atomic number is 18 argon atomic number is 18 so after the argon argon means 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 after 3p6 the electron enter into 4s orbital instead of 3d due to its n plus l value so 4s and 3d orbital now here 18 electrons are completed 19 and 20 electrons are enter into 4s2 the remaining electron are enters into transitional d block elements d block elements now we have 4s2 3d2 3d1 configuration now the second one is 4s2 3d2 s2 d3 s2 d4 we have discussed there some exceptions that there chromium and copper we have discussed later so s2 d5 s2 d6 s2 d7 s2 d8 s2 d9 here s2 d10 so these are the general configurations only half filled the stability of orbital configurations like this half filled configuration more stable than that of full filled configuration full filled configuration is more stable than that of empty orbital so in generally d5 configurations are more stable why because the orbital having the phi d d orbital having the phi orbitals again half filled means d5 configuration is half filled d10 is full filled d0 is empty so now here chromium very closer to the d5 configuration so try to achieve the stability of the d5 configuration here s electron jump to the 3d4 then it becomes 4s1 3d5 4s1 3d5 similarly copper also closer to the full filled configuration that's why the 4s electron 4s1 electron jump to the lower energy to its higher energy that means s1 to d10 configuration so these two configurations are exception these two configurations are exception the chromium configuration is 4s1 3d5 copper configuration is 4s1 3d10 now the second one is magnetic properties generally if d block elements like this if d block orbitals appear like this if one electron is present the spin of the electron is upward upward spin of the electron if two electrons are present like this if more than two electrons like it having the six electrons that means here violation of ohm's rule some of the cases violation of ohm's rule is also possible here one electron upward spin second electron downward spin so the both the both the electron spin 
the both the electron spin is cancelled to each other. Now net electronic spin magnetic momentum is equal to zero. Magnetic momentum is equal to zero. If n is equal to zero, then magnetic momentum is equal to the zero. You have mu is equal to magnetic momentum. So mu is nothing but magnetic momentum spin only formula. Spin only formula. So n into n plus two. This is the magnetic momentum spin only formula. Spin only formula. So I'll give the, a small table regarding to the magnetic properties. If if n is equal to 1, mu is equal to something. If n is equal to 0, then mu is equal to 0. If n is equal to 1, we can substitute the value 1 into 1 plus 2, that means 3. 1 into 3, root 3 value is 1.732. 2, then it is 2.828. 3, 3.89. 4, 4.9. 5, 5.9. 6, 6.9. Here, 4 unpaid electron, that means 4.9. 5 unpaid electron, that means 5.9. So regularly common question came from the magnetic momentum. If any system having the four unpaid electron, it's shown how much of magnetic momentum. So magnetic momentum is shown in Bohr magneton. Shown in Bohr magneton. Here Bohr magneton is the units of magnetic momentum. Units of magnetic momentum. So these two are the basic concept before going to the VBT. Before deals with VBT, we are going to the topic. So, before, uh, in the topic, uh, I do the table uh, regarding to the hybridization. Now, the first one is a uh, coordination number, second one is a uh, hybridization, third one is uh, geometry, fourth one is von Ange, fifth one is orbitals, which orbitals are involved in the hybridization. So, now, according to the coordination number two, generally coordination number two means one has uh, the starting orbitals like this, S, P, D, F. S having one orbital, P having three orbital. Now we need only two orbital. That's why one S orbital, another one is P orbital. So here SP hybridization, geometry is linear, bond angle is nothing but uh, 180 degrees orbitals SPX. Now if three, that means SP2, uh, SP2 means a planar triangle or triangular planar. That means 120 degrees S comma P X comma P Y. So maybe either 4s, 4px, 4py or 5s, 5px, 5py, etc. Now here 4. 4 having the two types. One is sp3, another one is sd3. sp3, sd3. So both the shapes are same. It is a tetrahedral. Now bond angles are 109 degrees to 8 minutes. So orbital contribution. First one is s, p, x, p, y, p, z. Now the second one is S, DXY, DYZ, DZX. DXY, DYZ, DZX. So this is the second orbitals. Now we'll go with uh, coordination number 5. That means uh, SP3D and DSP3. Sometimes it appeared as uh, DSP3 also. Now the uh, SP3D shape is trigonal bipyramidal. Trigonal bipyramidal. Now the second shape is square pyramidal. So the trigonal bipyramidal shapes are 120 and 90 degrees. Now square pyramidal shape are all are 90. We have two types of 90s are present like this. So here 90, 90, 90, 90. But another one is also a 90 degrees uh, contribution. Now here orbital contribution is S, Px, Py. Pz and Bz square here yeah, that uh, why because here the orbital which are uh, oriented uh, top to bottom that means vertical orientation that's why Bz square orbital are uh, placed in vertical that's why here Bz square orbitals are involved S Px Py Pz Dx square Y square in case of square planar complex square pyramidal complexes Dx square Y square orbitals are involved now coordination number six means sp3 d2 and D2 SP3, SP3 D2 and D2 SP3. So now here SP3 D2 and D2 SP3 both are octahedral complexes. Octahedral complexes. Here also octahedral. But uh, here hybridization can start with SP3 D2 hybridization. Then it becomes outer orbital complexes. Outer orbitals uh, hybridization can start with N minus 1D orbitals. Then it is inner orbital complexes. So here both bond angles are 90 degrees. Now the orbital contribution in sp3d2 is S, Px, Py, Pz. 
dx square y square dz square dx square y square dz square now in case of d2 sp3 here n minus 1 dx square y square comma n minus 1 d z square comma s n s n p x n p y n p z so this is the table which is regarding to the valency bond theory and uh, which helps the knowing about uh, hybridization geometry bond angle and orbitals which orbitals are involved in the hybridization of so, uh, um, valency bond theory features of valency bond theory so the general features generally metals having the d orbitals sometimes maybe it is completely filled or partially filled so if maybe let us assume if uh, the metal having the d6 configuration so in case of a d6 configuration so the metal orbitals uh, electron filling method follows uh, of bow Huns as well as Pauli's exclusion principle. Now electrons played like this. So again, if 3D orbitals here, 4s, 4p as well as 4d orbitals empty. So 4s, 4p, 4d orbitals empty. Whenever the ligands approaches to the central metal atom, whenever the ligands approaches to the central metal atom, so the ligands mainly focus on the empty orbitals. Whenever the ligand pair of electrons can contribute their pair of electrons to the empty orbitals of a metal, then it forms a coordinate covalent bond. Coordinate covalent bond. So generally, coordinate covalent bond represents like this in uh, as per as earlier classes on a situic theory. If two ligands can participate their pair of electrons to the central metal atom vacant orbital, then hybridization is SP. If three metals are participate the uh, are participate the hybridization, then it is sp2. If four metals like this sp3. So like uh, if uh, one s orbital, three p orbitals, two d orbitals are participated, then it is hybridization is sp3 d2 sp3 d2. So now the second one here hybridization is so d metals. Now the first the second one is hybridization. Now the third one is. By using the hybridization, we can uh, we can assume the geometry with the help of a previous table, with the help of a previous table geometry as well as bond angle, and uh, yeah, geometry bond angle as well as orbital contribution, orbital involvement. Now the fourth one is a number of unpaid electron. How do how do you calculate the number of unpaid electron? A number of unpaid electron. So now here it having the six electrons. In the six electrons here. First orbital having the two electrons, one is upward spin, another one is a downward spin. So these two are paired electrons, the remaining all are single electrons. Those single unpaired electrons, those single electrons are known as unpaired electrons. Here the number of unpaired electrons is four, one, two, three, four. So here number of unpaired electrons represented in a small n. Here n is equal to four, n is equal to four. By using the four, we can calculate the magnetic momentum. Magnetic momentum is 4.9 Bohr magneton. Bohr magneton. So from the magnetic momentum calculations, if mu is equal to zero, then it's said to be diamagnetic species. Whenever it is diamagnetic, if number of unpaired electrons there is no present in the molecule, if the number of unpaired electrons are not present in the molecule, then it's said to be diamagnetic in nature. So whenever magnetic momentum is not equal to the zero, then that is paramagnetic in nature. Paramagnetic in nature. So diamagnetic as well as paramagnetic complexes, which is also helpful to knowing the like uh, energy structures uh, in the evidences of Werner's theory. Now, uh, if the fifth here the ligand classification, not the classification, just assumption of Pauli. So Pauling assumes. Ligands are two types. Pauli assumes ligands are two types. One is a strong field ligand, another one is a weak field ligand. So gen general terminology strong ligands and weak ligands. So, so the let us the examples CO, CN minus, NO plus, like etc. Here F minus, Br minus, water. So these are the weak field ligands. So strong field, strong field ligands, whenever which are approaches to the metal atom, then it forms a strong metal. Strong field ligand nature. Here L S means a strong, L W means a weak field. So whenever ligand donate their pair of electrons to the central metal atom, so like this manner, the six electrons are uh, are counted to the metal atom. Then here the bonding nature, coordinate covalent becomes covalent. So in case of strong field ligands, metal ligand nature is covalent. 
but here covalent nature is not present here it is not covalent but it is ionic in nature so metal ligand nature is ionic metal ligand nature is ionic now the next one is i think six so here strong field and weak field ligands whenever the presence of strong field ligands metal ligand nature is covalent here weak field ligands metal ligand nature is metal ligand nature metal ligand nature is covalent here metal ligand nature is ionic so whenever the presence of strong field ligands strong field ligands here electrons are pairing takes place electrons are paired up now here in, pre in the presence of a weak field here electrons are follows Hund's rule so uh, instead of following of the Hund's rule here paired up takes place that's why here violation of Hund's rule violation of Hund's rule that means uh, here it omits the Hund's rule generally strong field ligands it omits the Hund's rule but weak field ligands uh, it uh, follows the Hund's rule now the seventh one is if hybridization can start with uh, n s orbital hybridization can start with n s orbital that means uh, equal number of uh, n uh, uh, same uh, principal quantum number then that orbitals are known as outer orbital complexes outer orbital complexes if orbital can participate the, with the help of n minus 1 d orbital n minus 1 d orbital so hybridization can start with the n minus 1 d orbital then it's said to be inner orbital complexes inner orbital complexes uh, sometimes inner orbitals are nothing but a strong field ligands outer orbitals are nothing but a weak field ligands so this is the assumption only so inner orbitals are nothing but strong field ligand uh, outer orbitals is nothing but a weak field ligand so these are the features of vbt now let us discuss the some of the examples first one is inner orbital complexes so, so these are the examples of inner orbital complexes whether it is right or wrong we will check them so first one is k4 fe cn6 times so generally iron configuration is 3d6 uh, 4s2 so here iron at the presence uh, plus 2 oxidation state that means uh, your loss of electron takes place those those two electrons lost from 4s orbital then it is a 3d6 that means uh, like here 3d6 and 4s is vacant orbital 4s is vacant orbital so the presence of strong field ligands so note the point the presence of strong field ligands so it violates the Hund's rule complex it violates the Hund's rule that means it omits the Hund's rule that means it does not follow the Hund's rule so according to Hund's rule after the alpha field configuration pair up taking place but uh, here it violation takes place that's why here start uh, starting onwards it pairing touch uh, pairing takes place now here six electrons that means uh, one and two pairing start started three and four four five and six so generally uh, our ligand number coordination number is six uh, so coordination number six means it required six vacant orbitals so now here the coordinate covalent bond takes place so but according to polling polling conclusion strong field against uh, with metal atom it forms the uh, covalent bonds so now here for us like a 4p that means uh, three unpaired electrons so those uh, six uh, six ligands approaches the electrons to the central metal atom now i'll mark the different colors like uh, here first cyanide ion can donate the pair of electrons here so first one second one third one fourth one fifth one sixth one now we have the six electrons that's why uh, nf2 six electrons now here how many orbitals are participated in the uh, hybridization now here two orbitals d2 one s orbital 3p orbitals so hybridization is a d2 sp3 hybridization is d2 sp3 so the first one is hybridization that is a d2 sp3 now the second one is if d2 sp3 means the geometry of the complex is nothing but octahedral geometry is nothing but octahedral whenever it started with n minus 1 d orbital n minus 1 d means here n is principal quantum number is 4 n minus 1 means 3 so if it is started with n minus 1 d orbital it start with n minus 1 d orbital that's why it is inner orbital complexes inner orbital complexes now what about magnetic momentum so here the fourth one is magnetic momentum of the complex now here number of unpaired electrons is zero 
So there is no single electron. That means number of unpaired electrons is zero. If n is equal to zero, mu is equal to zero. If mu is equal to zero, then the magnet is a magnetic nature of the complex is diamagnetic. Magnetic nature of the complex is diamagnetic in diamagnetic in nature. So here we, we will get the several points. One is a hybridization is a D two sp three. Second one is a geometry. Third one is here it is a inner orbital complexes. Fourth one is a number of unpaired electrons. Fifth one is a magnetic momentum is equal to zero. Sixth one is a diamagnetic in nature. Diamagnetic in nature. Now we'll go with the second example. Example is K three Cr Cn six times. Now here chromium configuration is three D five four S one. So here present chromium present at the plus three oxidation state. That means here three electrons lost. So one electron lost from the four S orbital, two electron lost from the three D orbital. Then it becomes a three D three. So 3d3 here 4s 4p orbitals are vacant. Now here according to strong field rule, so here pairing takes place. Here pairing takes place according to strong field. Here pairing takes place. That means it does not correct. So experimental condition says it is paramagnetic. But uh, these three orbitals, starting three orbitals, d x y d y z d z x orbitals are degenerate orbitals. So these degenerate orbitals cannot pair within the three electrons. Within the three electrons, that, that's why uh, next uh, Pauling proposed an alternative method is nothing but so first three orbitals can degenerate orbitals. That's why after the three uh, three orbitals, fourth electron can pair. Fourth electron can pair. Four s and four p. Now here, so six six ligand means d two sp three. So the first one is hybridization D two sp three shape is octahedral. Octahedral means inner orbital complexes. Now the third one is a joint uh, bond angle is ninety degrees. So those orbitals uh, involvement also we know that. Now here fourth one n is equal to four. Magnetic momentum is equal to four point nine. Here, if uh, mu is not equal to zero, that means it is paramagnetic species. That means it is paramagnetic species. Now we'll go with a third example. Now we'll go with a third example. That means K three, M N, C N six times. Here, M N configuration is a four S three D five and four S two. 3d5 and 4s2. Here, Mn oxidation state is plus three. Mn oxidation state is plus three. That means uh, here three, three electrons lost from the uh, from two electrons from 4s orbital, one electron from d orbital. Then it is becomes 3d4. So now 3d4 and 4s is vacant. 4p is vacant. 4s and 4p are vacant. Here four electron takes place. So according to Lewis assumption. Fourth electron onwards pairing starts place even the strong field ligand also even the strong field ligand also so the first one second one third one this is the fourth one this is the fourth one here two degenerate three d orbitals are vacant these two orbitals can participate in the hybridization now hybridization is a d two sp three d two sp three hybridization shape is a octahedral then magnetic momentum. Sorry, then number of unpaired electrons are two. If magnetic momentum is equal to two point eight two eight, mu is not equal to zero. That means it is a paramagnetic species. That means it is paramagnetic species. Now we'll go with uh, example number four. Now we'll go with uh, example number four. Vanadium NH three six here Cl three. So here ammonia is weak field ligand. Even though weak field ligand, it shows no different properties. Generally, vanadium configuration is four four S two three D three three D three and four S two. Here vanadium existed as a plus three configuration. It existed as a plus three. Then it becomes a three D two configuration. Three D two configuration. Four S four P orbitals are vacant. So even though it having two electrons, so that means. Um, 
first three orbitals degenerate orbital that's why first three orbitals are fulfilled then only pairing takes, uh, takes place now here these two electrons occupies here so then it having the three empty orbitals in 3d again 4s and 4p are also empty orbital so according to Pauli's conclusion even though it is weak field ligand here n minus 1d orbital can participate in the hybridization n minus 1d orbital can participate in the hybridization that is the assumption of polling that's why it is d2 and sp3 so this theory was uh, explained I, I think this theory was explained uh, with the uh, some of the experimental conditions some of the experimental condition now hybridization is d2 sp3 shape is octahedral so number of unpaid electrons are 2 then mu is equal to 2 that means uh, 2.828 mu is not equal to zero that is a paramagnetic species so those compounds are all are inner orbital complexes now the example number four now the example number four sorry example number five example number five chromium cn6 minus 4 that means here chromium oxidation state is 3d5 4s1 here chromium existed in plus 2 oxidation state that means 3d4 I think we are already discussed 3d4 okay we are already discussed in 3d4 so uh, now 3d4 that means here four electrons can pay the fourth electron can only pair the remaining order two unpaired electrons now the hybridization of the molecule is d2 sp3 d2 sp3 hybridization d2 sp3 shape is octahedral that is the inner orbital complexes n is equal to 2 then mu is equal to 2.828 then it is a paramagnetic species then it is paramagnetic species sixth one listen carefully sixth one is very exceptional case so listen carefully six so cobalt no2 six times yeah, the example number six, it having it having the some exception. Listen carefully. So magnetic momentum tells it is paramagnetic. So mag, uh, magnetic measurements gives the information it is paramagnetic. So here NO2 minus is a strong field ligand. NO2 minus is a strong field ligand. So the strong field ligands can pair up uh, takes place in the three D level. So cobalt means. Uh, 3d7 4s2 3d7 4s2 or 4s2 3d7 whatever it may be so 3d7 4s2 again uh, cobalt here appeared in plus 2 oxidation state the those two electrons lost from the 4s orbital then it becomes 3d7 3d7 now these seven electron can occupy with the help of uh, violation of Hund's rule now it occupies pairing takes place so these are the orbitals now this is the orbital contribution now here 4s orbital 4p orbital 4, 4d orbitals are vacant now let we have the six 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 ligands that's why our hybridization is dsp3d so this is not possible for uh, louis sorry for uh, valency bond theory now pauling gives an another explanation so here cobalt and O2 six times minus four in the presence of H2O2 it readily loses the electron then it forms a minus three this experiment shows here outermost electron having the very higher energy level very higher energy level that's why here 4s orbital can vacant again it jump to the 5s orbital before the 4d orbital it having the 5s orbital so now we have the six electrons in 3d orbital now the seventh electron can jump to the 5s orbital the, so the seventh electron exited to the 5s orbital then it becomes uh, it having the two vacant orbital in 3d one a vacant orbital 4 as so three vacant orbitals in 4p now it becomes uh, d2 sp3 d2 sp3 so here hybridization is a d2 sp3 d, uh, d2 sp3 shape is octahedral it is ioc that means inner orbital complexes n is equal to 1 then mu is equal to 1.732 that means it is a paramagnetic species that means it is a paramagnetic species
flow with uh, different configurations. So D1 configuration, whether weak field ligand or strong field ligand, it having the configuration like this only. So here only one electron. That's why here n-1 d orbital can participate in the hybridization. That's why it is a D2 sp3 configuration. Now D2 configuration, whether it is a strong field or weak field, here also it participates the n minus 1 d orbital, n minus 1 d orbital. This is also an inner orbital complexes. In case of D3, weak field or strong field, it having the three unpaid electrons. That means it is also inner orbital complexes. But onwards, D4 having the strong field, then only possible. So D4 strong field can it, it pair up talks, pair up takes place at the fourth electron. Pair up takes place at the fourth electron. It is also D2 sp3 is a D2 sp3 is nothing but a inner orbital complexes. Now D5, whenever in the presence of strong field ligands, it acts as inner orbital complexes. It acts as inner orbital complexes due to the fourth and fifth electron pair up takes place. Fourth and fifth electron pair up takes place. Now the D6 in the presence of presence of strong field electron, strong field again, it can only it, it, it act as a 